Arctic sea ice reflects about 80% of the sun's heat, stabilizing the colder temperature of the ocean. Based on the latest satellite data cited in a December 2007 article, National Aeronautics and Space Administration climate scientist Jay Zawali predicts that nearly all the ice could be gone from the Arctic Ocean by the end of summer 2012. Arctic ice in September 2007 was 23% below previous record low from NASA satellite data and 50% below 1950 levels from ship data. Other records surpassed. Greenland surface ice loss is now 400% greater than 15 years ago. Surface temperatures in the Arctic are the highest in 77 years of record keeping. There is hope. According to James Hansen, top climate scientist at NASA, we have passed tipping points. We have not passed a point of no return. We can still roll things back, but it is going to require a quick turn in direction. Dr. Gerald Dickens, Associate Professor of Earth Science at the prestigious Rice University located in Texas, USA, and Editor-in-Chief of the American Geophysical Union's Paleoceanography Journal, stated in an interview with Supreme Master Television. But it turns out that most of the carbon, about 93% of it, is in the ocean, not trees or in the atmosphere. And so what's happening right now is we're adding a lot of carbon to the atmosphere. And it's coming in much faster than it can go into the biosphere or into the ocean. Um, so that's why the CO2 is going up very, very quickly. According to U.S. University of California, Davis's newspaper, The California Aggie, published on March 4, 2008, U.S. professor says methane from Arctic lakes adds to global warming. In a talk presented at the University of California at Davis, Dr. Katie Walter, a professor of limnology and environmental research at the University of Alaska, stated that methane bubbling up from Arctic lakes is now being released into the atmosphere. This is due to melting of the lake's permafrost layers resulting from climate change. According to Dr. Walter, who has personally conducted Arctic lake research in areas such as Siberia, this phenomena causes further global warming because methane fuels its own production by melting even more permafrost layers once released. have to save this planet so that we'll be able to stay first because if the ice all melt you know if the pole all melt out and then if the sea is warm then the gas will be released from the ocean and we all be poisoned by the gas from the ocean it's a lot of gas enough to kill everyone if you see the, the Singapore uh, lecture, I already warned that we have to change the way we live, otherwise too late. It's the 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, before that, I always talk about how we deforest our planet, yeah? 
meat eating and all that is contribute to a lot of damage to our planet, you know. Scientists say many things. They are listening now, but I just hope they do it fast. It just take action. All the governments in the world really take it now seriously. Mm-hmm. It's just I'm worried the action might be too slow, that's all. Because the eyes are reflecting the sun, you see? So I send it back into the space. But the eyes are melting so fast now that there is not enough reflection, yeah? And because the sea is already warm. And because the sea warm, it melts the eyes. And because the eyes melt, the sea warmer. You see what I mean, the cycle? The way it is going, if they don't fix it, four or five years time, finito. No more. It's really that urgent. If you had a message for the leaders of the world, uh, what would you say to them? I would say to them, use their mighty power to change the diet of the planet and adopt immediately new technology, renewable energy, and set an example by themselves by becoming a vegetarian or vegan. Use Mm -hmm. their mighty power, use their example to set a new diet for the planet, the vegetarian diet. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Master. They first had to be vegetarians, and then they use their power, truly. They could do that by forbidding meat as well, by stifling all the harm that meat would do to humans and the planet. Forbid meat eating, just like forbid smoking cigarettes and drugs. There's also another kind of harmful drug. We're continuing to live and the children will grow up in a better environment. But you see, it's up to humanity to decide what they want and which direction they turn. Must have since stock breeding is the major cause of greenhouse gas, it looks like vegetarianism would be a solution, but do you think it would be enough? No, no, I don't say just vegetarian, you know. Technology has to change. We have veggies, we have uh, renewable energy, we have hybrid cars, we have plastic trees, we have prayer, remember? Vegetarianism is for a long term benefit, to less of the karma, to come to the mercy of heaven. Master, if you had a message for the world, what, uh, what would it be? That I love them very much. 